All right, welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, as you heard, and I've got a special uh, episode today. I'm here in Toronto at the grand opening of a new Lucid Space, or Lucid Studio. And I'll get to Adam to introduce yourself from Lucid. Hi, my name is Adam McLeod. I'm the studio manager for our Vancouver Pacific Center location. They brought the expert in to talk about the, uh, the space and the studio location. I uh, want to thank Lucid for inviting me to this, and it's exciting that they're here in Ontario as they continue their Canadian expansion. So let's talk, uh, first talk, Adam, about the space itself, about what your, you know, what your mindset is in putting the space together and, and making that, um, you know, what's the messaging for consumers that come into this space, so these studios? Yeah, the space is really unique. Um, I, I, you know, it's, it's been partially designed by our um, head of design, Derek Jenkins, and really, you know, the, the idea is meant to be really captivating. Of course, the car is our centerpiece. It draws a lot of attention when customers come in. Yeah. But there's so many other pieces um, that draw inspiration and kind of bring together that whole California cool, lucid It's a vibe. very calming space, I have to tell you. You don't kind of rush in to get here and then I'm here and it's like, oh, it's... You know, I think that's purposeful, correct? The attention to detail, <laughs> yeah. in not only in the car, but of course in the space as well. Uh, you know, th these are these are, are marvels of design. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, excellent, excellent. All right, well, let's, uh, I guess, take a quick tour with you, and you can tell us about some of the spots uh, in the space. In the Absolutely, studio. let's do it. So, okay. as we walk into the space, you know, it's, it's warm, it's inviting, of course the car is the centerpiece, but we also, peppered throughout the space, have these small little seating areas that invite guests to sit down, take a breather, and kind of admire the car and the other exhibits, maybe read some of the technology exhibits that we have uh, mm -hmm. out in the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, always complemented with uh, the, the lighting that showcases the car, um, and, and really highlights just the, the attention to detail and the beauty of this car. Uh, so this area back here, just behind that partition, this is what we call our CMF, or Colors, Materials, and Finishes. Mm -hmm. And it's really an interactive space where customers can come and actually touch and feel the different interiors, mm -hmm. pair up uh, their, their selected paint colors. Of course, we can do this virtually on lucidmotors.com, um, but there's nothing like actually kind of standing at a table, having one of our studio advisors uh, with, with a customer, and even just experiencing I would really want to see this, this uh, finish in, in my Lucid Air as I'm designing it. Um, what I like about this space is that it's all mobile, so we can move these. If customers want to grab one of the paint samples, they can bring it over and they can pair it up to their car to kind of help inspire them of what's my Lucid Air going to be like. There's a very bespoke nature to our business. We want customers to have that ability to customize their Lucid Air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and I think that that touch feel is, is very important, especially when you're looking at a vehicle that's revolutionary in the space that it's in. Um, it is a luxury sedan, obviously, so you need to be able to really uh, kind of, you know, get more personal in that experience as you're looking at, at purchasing a vehicle and interested in this vehicle. So I really love the display elements and, and the ability to almost be like kids and kind of play with things and see how they fit together and, and color match. I'm terrible with color matching, so, you know, my wife is the one that, that picks stuff out for me, but uh, I could certainly see this as being beneficial uh, to really get a sense of comfort for the customer, especially in, in, the, in the materials, the use of materials and the color palettes. All right, so here we are in the merch section. Tell us a little bit about that. You know, one of the things about branding is that people love this brand. We've been mm -hmm. around for quite a little while, mm -hmm. and uh, customers we customers who, who uh, see the value in purchasing a Lucid Air and they want that in their life uh, want to represent our brand. And so we carry a variety of different merchandise um, that's also available on our on our website uh, for customers to represent uh, their their uh, passion and pride for Lucid. Mm -hmm. Of course, our employees love it as well. Of course, uh, and then right over here, a little different, mm -hmm. is an, another accessory, another piece of merchandise that we will be selling in the near future is the Lucid Connected Home Charging Station. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Didn't know you guys had that, so interesting, yeah. It's, it's a product that's going to be released a little bit later on in the year, okay. uh, but it's, it's going to be a connected home charging station that is really going to maximize uh, the efficiency and the, um, and, and the, the power of, of your Lucid Air when you're connecting at home. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the benefits of this, and, and for definitely for our technology, is that Lucid Air does come with bi-directional capabilities. Yeah. So not only can you charge your car from your home uh, in the event of a power outage or something like that, you can also charge your home from your car. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the connected home charging station is going to allow us to kind of maximize the potential of that technology. All right, so here where it looks like a digital experience. So tell me about that. This is one of, other than the car, this yeah. is one of my favorite experiences in the studio. Um, uh, this is our virtual reality demo. You know, a lot of customers, uh, you know, want see, see the one car that we have in our studio and say, 
what would it look like if mm -hmm. it was red with the mm. Santa Cruz interior? Well, we can do that over at the Colors, Materials, and Finishes area. We can do it virtually on the website. Uh, but there's really nothing like immersing yourself in that mm. experience. And so the VR is uses state-of-the-art technology to be able to render that car. Uh, that we cool. have this virtual, uh, what we call a buck, um, here that kind of mimics the driving seat, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the both front seats, where customers can work with one of our studio advisors, uh, sit down uh, and customize the car, put those virtual reality headsets on. Uh, we can open the doors, we can open the front trunk, the rear trunk, we can do all the things that you oh, would cool. typically do in one of our show cars, other than drive it, of course. Um, uh, and of course, whatever the, the, the passenger, the customer is seeing is also represented on the screen so others around maybe in their party can see it as well. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a really great addition to our in-studio experience. It uh, generates a lot of buzz and, and we, we love having it. You know, I think that that's an awesome feature. I have not seen that before. So, you know, the ability not necessarily to be driving it because I, I'm sure at some point you'll be offering test drives to, uh, to prospective buyers as well, but that ability to look at the colors, put them together, visualize them in a sense of, of 3D sense, right? Um, in that virtual reality element, play with some of the controls and see how things operate. I think it's, it's great, you know, if you... Uh, All right, so we have a small seating area up front, but now we have this uh, other seating area. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so this is what we would typically consider the lounge. Mm -hmm. um, it's a place where customers who uh, want a bit more of a personal or intimate experience with their studio advisor can come and uh, sit down and relax, maybe talk through some of the, the finer details mm -hmm. of what it would take to place a reservation uh, or, or even at some point go through the purchasing process of that car. Mm -hmm. um, what I personally love about this space uh, is actually in, found inside the coffee table. We call these inspiration tables. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of different artifacts and the question we get all the time is what's the purpose of the sand or what's the purpose of the spoon that we have in there? Right. And these are all objects that our design team led by Sue Magnuson have um, have got inspiration, taken inspiration from, uh, for all the different interiors. Mm, so, okay. you know, you can see that the, there's there's brushed aluminum on these uh, kind of round screwdrivers uh, that you find all the way throughout the car in the mm -hmm. rails and on the mirrors and on the inside. There's the sand from uh, Santa Cruz, which is, is represented in the Santa Cruz interior. And mm -hmm. so all of those details have come through and it's really just a, a great calming space uh, that can also provide some inspiration. Yeah, no, I definitely see that. That uh, It's pretty cool. You know, I love the thought that's put into all this um, because it, it really does build that personal connection from the consumer, from the prospective buyer to the vehicle, to what they're doing, yeah. um, and empowers them to really kind of get take more of a, okay, I'll take the black one with the white interior or whatever. I mean, that's, you know, beyond that basic to really kind of think about their experience that they want in this vehicle because these are vehicles people are going to keep for a long time. You know, they are going to go... You know, EVs go for a long, long time, folks. So I think having that ability to really get into that level of detail and make that personal connection just enhances the buying experience. All right, All right so we're going to talk about these two walls and what they represent to consumers. And if you, Zeb, if you can introduce yourself, please. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Zeb Kokenauer. I'm a manager of interior design at Lucid Motors. And I'm going to take you through the the overall story of Lucid Motors and the post-luxury. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, so you've heard us touch on post-luxury and what that is and builds on top of the efficiencies of what that adds to this new era, mm -hmm. right? Um, for Lucid, for us, it's three pillars. It's energy, space, and time. Mm -hmm. Energy is they've taken you through how we focus our drivetrain to be super compressed in uh, energy density, yes. right? We use that as a benefit not only through the vendor box of one day being able to transfer power from the car mm -hmm. back to other devices, yep. not just a car, using it as an overall tool, right? Yep. Something to make your life better. Um, also, the size of the motor, right? Mm -hmm. And with the size of the motor and the battery pack together, um, we optimize space. So that's one point of energy. The second point for space, by using that layout, it gives us the most we optimize the efficiency of the occupant layout, right? So now we, we push the occupants from heel point in the front of the cabin to the hip point in the rear of the cabin. 
um, and that gives us this similar uh, interior space as a Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Mm -hmm. But the, ex the overall exterior of the vehicle is on a C-Class. Right, right? It's less. Okay. So our CEO likes to really describe it as the TARDIS. There's, yeah. there's a lot more inside than what you would expect. <laughs> right. um, and then finally, time. So time over the charging, over the, the user experience, all about adding this efficiency and convenience of the usage of the product. So yes. the more time you have in life to us is that is luxury, right? Something that doesn't cause anything that adds more to your life than you don't need. All right, so Zeb, let's uh, talk about the vehicle itself. Your pride and joy. This is the bell of the ball. That's why yeah. we're here. So hmm? um, the exterior overall, really inspired by um, aircraft lines, uh, minimal clean lines, and making the form very fluid. Okay. Um, so. When it comes down to having the package, you know, certain sensors for ADAS, we're doing that in very discreet ways, through very clean, minimal ways. Um, also things like uh, every vent that you see is form follows function. So even these say. vents along the hood, mm -hmm. these are designed with the lighting team and with the aer aerodynamic team and with the exterior design team to optimize cooling of the light modules. Um, as we come to the front of the car, the width is accentuated by these clean uh, one single light beam, right? And this really gives the vehicle really nice width. And then we use the DRLs on the side to give it really nice stance, mm -hmm. make the vehicle very planted. Mm -hmm. um, because it is a very fluid form and highly sleek, you don't really have like a fender bulge or something like that tra as traditional cars to give it stance. Right. So these are ways to keep the vehicle design very fluid, very, very aerodynamic friendly. Mm -hmm. It's, we also do a similar thing on the rear of the car, you know, adding the width with a, right. with a, wide, with a wide light. Because I believe it has one of the lowest drag coefficients in a production vehicle today. Is it 0.21? Is that, yeah. Did I get that right? Yes, that is correct. Yeah, okay. Yes. I'm just throwing numbers around, folks, but sometimes <laughs> I get it right. So. And are these adaptive headlights at all? Are there any turning yes. radiuses? Yeah. Anything like that? Excellent. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then our big feature here, uh, tying into the California brand and this indoor-outdoor living, is the canopy roof. Mm -hmm. So... At the belt line of the vehicle, everything above that, we like to add this nice contrast to the body, right? So the body is, you get one clean fluid form, yep. but the top is this open, yet covered in glass, so you're not in a convertible, but anywhere you're driving, you're becoming one with the environment. So for us in California, driving up the Sierra Nevadas to Tahoe and seeing the snow, yes. or driving along, you know, the PCH in Malibu, you know, you really get, drive, to, you, yes. you get to see the whole environment you're driving in. Exactly. Looks like you have mount port, uh, mount, mounting po points as well yes, if you yes. want to put a roof, we roof even, rack in, a uh, factory exactly. roof rack yep. later on, you can mount yeah, those. Yeah, roof yep. rack mounts. For, yep. And we actually have a, a roof box we showed recently. Okay. Um, for that'll be coming for the vehicle. Yeah, very, very lovely lines. You know, I love the, the use of the color palette as well. Um, you know, it's not an it's not an over rated chrome type of element. It's much more subtle and sophisticated, I would say. And I'm not a designer. I'm just it, pointing it these out on comes, my own. So. It comes back to the to the uh, the aircraft design. Yeah, right? it's, mm -hmm. it's never really flashy. True. It's more. Yeah. It, just, it just adds to the craftsmanship of the vehicle. Yeah, see this on a B29 or something like exactly. that. You know? yeah. <laughs> exactly. Vehicle. Moving yeah. on to the rear of the vehicle, um, it's similar concept as the, as the front. We want to maximize the stance and width of the vehicle, and we do that through one large um, taillight element. Mm -hmm. And we also achieve this by adding a split line around the back that's on the outside of the car on the side rather than in the middle. And this optimizes the use case of the rear of the, of the trunk. Mm -hmm. So. Realistically, when this is open, you can reach in from the side and add your lug luggage from the curb. Mm -hmm. All right, so moving back into the trunk opening, uh, like I was saying, by moving the split line to the side, you really optimize the usage of mm -hmm. all of the interior space. Um, so in this region, we have the, uh, the charge port bag, so the cable you carry with you okay. is designed to fit flush in this pocket, so it flushes out the low floor height okay. when it's in there. Yep. But on top of that, being an EV and having such a tight motor package, we have the option of additional storage underneath. Yep. So here you can stack taller items. You can also use this to split, split up uh, your storage. So let's say you have larger tall bags here, but groceries on the other side of that, and use this as a divider to help organize your, your luggage. Yeah, I mean, it's really deep. That was the yes, first thing that caught my, deep, yeah. my, you know, I'll put my, my arm in, folks, and it's like pretty well to the elbow. So, you know, you're talking that much depth in here, and, and it's 
you know, three quarters of the width of the trunk. So, yeah. uh, and probably what about a foot and a half, foot wide, kind of kind of thing. So, uh, it's 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 pretty big for a lot of space. Yeah, that's cool. So. Like before, we were talking about the front of the vehicle and the width that the lights add to the vehicle. Not only is that a feature for for the exterior, but this makes this adds an opportunity to change the split line of the hood, right? So our hood split line runs down the side of the car and from the front light blade, mm -hmm. and this allows us to add with the electric powertrain much more storage space and a much larger frunk. So we have a two-level uh, frunk storage. We have one level here where you can put smaller items. But yep. this also has a lift-up divider, yep. and then you can with have, a very deep yeah. exactly mm -hmm. with a very deep. Um, Again, you know, I'll put my arm. I mean, exactly. we're talking. Yeah, we're talking <laughs> that deep. I mean, that that's quite quite it's, far, it's, deeper than the trunk. Exactly. Looks yeah. One ask you one question. So anything here that consumers would have to deal with popping this out, like no, never. anything yeah. like that? No. There's okay. things here for um, the fire department. For EMS, yeah. To, There's no tag it. hanging out, exactly. so we see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they know where to go to disconnect the main power. Otherwise, it's you don't need to touch it. If there's anything that needs to be done, like have an air filter or something like that, take it to the exactly, uh, or or have the mobile service come and have that done. All right. So, lucid interior design. Um, the space concept is where this all comes from, and it starts with the, using the drivetrain as the, to optimize the layout of the interior. Um, so from the heel point to from the front occupant to the hip point of the rear occupant. We maximize the space and length through dimensions of the layout, but also um, through interior design, we make the, the space look wider as well. And a key point you're seeing here between front and rear, we like the, we designed it so the front of the cabin is more more sporty, a little bit more aggressive, still a luxury taste, and the rear is more of this relaxation lounge area. And we do that through different ways I'll get into later between CMF and color breakup, also through overall line and tactile details. Yes, indeed. Great. All right, so let's uh, talk about the interior, which is uh, near and dear to your heart, Zeb. Yeah, so uh, let me talk about it, yeah. Absolutely, so one of my, well, my favorite part of this vehicle, obviously. Um, so the front of the cabin, we use these lines to really accentuate the width of the vehicle. And to tie into this California story, a lot of the form language is designed around the light and dark of form. But with these lines, we really accentuate the width. So we push the corners of the IP as far as we can to, to make this vehicle even feel more spacious. Also through this negative, through the concave shape of the mm -hmm. door, we have the main volume of the IP floating and this helps to more of a lightweight feel. So you'll see a lot of floating elements throughout the interior. Um, the next highlight of you know my one of my favorite points is this floating uh, IC unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the glass cockpit is 34 inch floating 5K. It's three screens and one housing. Mm -hmm. And on the left side, we use this for common vehicle functions. So these are door locks, defrost, lights, and wiper settings. And then on the right side, we have our media. And this is where you use all your your, your Spotify, your navigation. And, uh, and multiple multiple other apps. Changing settings, I would imagine, exactly. as well. Uh -huh. And the vision behind having the screen in this location versus you know maybe what the competitors are doing, we thought really about the 10 and 2 steering wheel position and not removing your hand too far from those areas. So the screen location to the steering wheel, it's a quick tap to, the, to these touch screens to do uh, modifications or changes to whatever features you need without really taking your eyes off the road. So we're trying to reduce distracted driving where we can. Bring your attention to the pilot panel. Mm -hmm. This is where you do more of your um, more detailed fine tuning of the vehicle. So we have this uh, drawer option where you slide your media function here down to the CID. And in the, in the pilot panel, we can also adjust, you know, seat massage, color themes, and other other you know important vehicle or important features of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Not only is this your deep dive area for navigation and features, but it also has a retractable option, mm -hmm. so there's more storage underneath. And yeah, this which, is which is a cool feature. Exactly. Yeah. So every little feature always goes back to the space concept. Uh, like you saw in the front and trunk, it's whatever extra space we can find optimized by electric powertrain. Let's take full advantage of that space. Mm -hmm. Uh, back to more of the uh, details of the interior. 
So another key point for us on top of just having touch screens to control features was this tactile ability and controls. So having tactile controls to me really adds this soul to the vehicle that other vehicles may not have. So it's good to have screens, to have options and configurability, but also having tactile features like, like the uh, temp and fan or volume roller. These are features that you use on a daily basis all the time. You want to use these without taking your eyes off the road. Um, so the key ones, obviously temp and fan for driver and passenger, these are things I touch on a daily basis. Yep. You know, every five to 10 minutes, you could be adjusting this mm -hmm. in the car. The volume roller here is mainly for yeah. the, the passenger because the driver has one on their steering wheel. And by the way, I picked that up intuitively when we got in the car and noticed that the, the radio was on. So I just, it looks uh, to like, me, it exactly. said that looks like a volume control. And, this is and I've never been in this vehicle. This yep. is the first time I've ever sat in it. So, it's, it's back, you're, you know, it's working. Yeah, it's back to designing, <laughs> you know, form follows function. Uh -huh. It needs to look like what it does. Mm -hmm. then, like the rollers on the steering wheel, mm -hmm. these obviously go up and down yep. and press, right? Okay. The, these, these are the features. Um, also, this uh, the chin switch on the steering wheel. This is one uh, large part with capacitive locating and mm -hmm. two physical switches. And we use the logos to locate where your thumb is to control each of these features. Yeah. And you have on the left uh, your ADAS functionality mm -hmm. yep. and on the right your media functionality. Pretty straightforward to understand. Mm -hmm. yeah, easy to pick up, yeah. yeah. It's similar with uh, you know, changing park you know, changing the gears, park, reverse, neutral, drive. Mm -hmm. On the right stock, similar to other vehicles in the market, every user that's used an EV or before even EVs, th this was an option, right? Mm -hmm. And then back to uh, the tactile ability again through vent controls. So the vent controls, these are twist, left, right, they're self-explanatory. Yep. Right? You look at that and you can tell what it does. Yep, absolutely. Um, then as we get into the door, um, we, like to focus all the all the features and controls in one localized area easily to reach without looking at it so as you can see here window switches and door release are in the same area mm -hmm. and this door release function not only is it an e-latch option but if the battery does run out of power all you have to do is pull it a little bit harder and it engages the cable for the emergency release so you know, very cool it, in a bad situation it's still the immediate reaction is, okay, mm -hmm. I just pull this harder and I'm able to get out of the car. So we talked about that before I press the record button on this particular segment, and you're absolutely correct. It's very intuitive. I just, you know, your hand kind of fits in, whether it be right or left-handed, depending on what side, and you know instinctively just to pull this down and the door will pop. Um, you know, it, I mean, that that is an interesting element because... Um, Sometimes you have to figure out, you know, exactly. again, I, I talked about the Model 3, people are still trying to figure out how to get out of the car once they, once they learn to get in. And I, so I put, had to put door open stickers on those buttons. I mean, it's, a, it's cool, it works, but so again, just something, I'm not that smart. I'm, you know, I deal with technology, but I'm not that smart of a person overall. So, you know, for an average consumer to just come in and pick that up or somebody you're picking up a passenger, uh, I think is, is a key element that a lot of manufacturers forget when, yeah. they're, when they're designing vehicles. It's, it's not always about just following the trend. Mm -hmm. It's about if you're going to add something new, is it really adding a benefit or efficiency to the consumer's life? Right. And right. is it going to be easy for them to use? Right. Um, On to the, uh, the center console. Um, so functionality in the timbre door. We have two mm -hmm. cup holders. Yep. We have one wireless charger. Nice and easy storage. to get to. Yes. Good, I'm always, it's a, it's a main thing. I'm having a coffee every day when I'm yeah, driving. Exactly. So it's, uh, or something. And you know, th this holds, you know, normal size cups, yep. but if you carry bottles, our doors are designed, um, mm -hmm. you can see on that side to, yep. to hold a larger water bottle. And there's even a, uh, an area on the base of the door that holds it in the proper position mm -hmm. during, you know, acceleration, different vehicles. So it doesn't roll around, exactly. fall back. You Very cool. Rattling around. Very nice, yeah. Then underneath the armrest. So we have this deep pocket here. We also have this option of a, uh, there's a sunglass holder that mm -hmm. sits in this tray. Um, and then this is one of our key features that we love from the design department. It's one big wood piece that somehow myster mysteriously rolls away. Mm -hmm. away. And onto the roof, yes. onto the canopy. So the canopy glass adds to the spaciousness of the vehicle. Back to the space concept yet again. Um, you know, it is, it is a fast windscreen shape. It's a cab for, forward design, but through that optimization of having this all as glass, it really doesn't 
infringe on your on your uh, space in your vehicle. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Here, it doesn't. It's not intrusive. Gives you that wide sweeping uh, view. Uh, you know, I am going to make a comparison to this on the Model X, obviously, where you have these floating um, uh, sun visors again because you have that uh, glass that goes back. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people wonder about how impractic, uh, you know, practical practical they're going to be but um, just by looking at them now you know you've got a nice dark tint here so mm -hmm. I think you're yeah. gonna be alleviating any issues yeah they take care of you know the Sun coming from the front mm -hmm. of the, of, towards the occupant but yeah. but above where the uh, where the Sun visor is is all tinted enough that Sun's not an issue mm -hmm. very nice though so next we'll go into the rear but just sure. to finally touch on the front you see you know there's a there's a lot more tactile detail up here and it really brings us back to this is the cockpit of the vehicle. This is the, the fighter pilot position. Mm -hmm. And now you'll see next in the rear how we get this to be a lot more relaxed um, through the through the design. Yeah. And one last thing, can we is the glove box able to yes. open? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's a glove. Control. There you go. They have to have a glove box. Exactly. That's a nice spacious, big deep one too. That's very deep. deep glove yeah. box. Very nice. All right, let's check out the back. All right. Okay. So let's talk through the rear of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, so in the back seat, like to start with the space concept again, you can see how much leg space we have. Tons. Um, yeah. We will have two battery pack options. So this is a long range option. Mm -hmm. But if you think this is good leg space, you even have better in the short range pack. We have this thing that the CEO refers okay. to as the foot garage. Ah. And that is underneath of where your feet are. Basically, there's fewer modules mm -hmm. on that pack. So you gain a lot more vertical space for okay. leg room. But this is already quite uh, impressive in my in my opinion it is a lot i have the seat where i would have it and this is i mean i've got a couple of fists of leg room without even trying hard so yeah so from even from the back of the seats you know taking the the theme to the rear we have this color split and the front of the cabin is always darker a little bit more sporty but as we come to the rear we get lighter and even in Mojave, so this is like our black option for mm -hmm. the vehicle, we go through shades of gray. So the front's black and the mm -hmm. rear is a lighter gray. This is more strongly seen in other options like uh, Santa Cruz or Tahoe themes. Um, but, you know, it still works well for the, the user that wants a black interior. Um, in the doors, again, you'll see the same as the front. Uh, with the functionality of the triggers, the window switches, but back here we go a little bit more quieter with the detailing. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more relaxing. We have this one shape that divides the door to kind of clear you and hug you into the uh, into the bench seat. And mm -hmm. also, this, you know, surface language is still this light and dark. This uh, mm -hmm. these concave forms that you see, you know, in ocean waves and tactile features on the back of the fence yep and then we on the back of the center console we have the sun shape for the rear climate controls uh seat heating we have storage enough for a water bottle mm. and then for sun shades on the side we uh all you have to do is use the window switch up twice and the sun shade comes up after the window closes oh okay Cool. Then up top here we have grab handles because, mm -hmm. like we said before, this is a very powerful car. Yeah. <laughs> um, some people will drive it in different ways. Yes. Um, so when you're getting thrown around by your friend in the back seat, you want a point to hold on to, and this is our point. Uh, then we have the reading lights and speakers mm -hmm. in this area as well. And continuation of the canopy into the yep. back, you know, this is all one big piece of glass to really add to the spaciousness of the rear cabin. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, and lots of head headroom with that. Mm -hmm. So. And then for the center of the of the bench seat, we have the drop-down armrest. We have the ski door. Um, so, you know, for a ski trip, you slide your uh -huh. your, your accessories. There. Or easy to reach back to the six-pack that's exactly. back there, <laughs> <laughs> the cooler. Yeah. Um, yeah, cup holders and more storage under the armrest. Nice. All right, well, I'm wrapping up here at the Lucid Studio. I know it's a longer probably than I thought episode, but I think it's important to really understand the thought process for Lucid, not that they're just high-end vehicle that wants to make a lot of money on, on you know, selling $100,000 cars as an example. There's a lot of thought in both the design, the engineering, and, and the whole methodology of the organization that I think is worth really exploring. And I hope watching this video gave you some sense of that. Yeah, you know, at some point I'll get a, I'll get one of these to, to drive for a couple of days and I'll give you more of my thought elements of driving capabilities. But 
I think it's good to understand the background, the, the, the thought again of how this vehicle came to fruition and what Lucid as an organization with some really smart people have been able to put into this vehicle. And you know, it is a great success story being able to engineer and develop these things in-house with, with pretty well all their parts uh, with the exception of the, the battery cells themselves uh, being, it, being developed and manufactured in-house. Again, very Tesla-like in being able to control their own supply chain, right? Being able to get the components and putting them together uh, as they've engineered and developed them. So, you know, yeah, they have chips to worry about and things like that, but, you know, they seem to be in a better place to be able to control that supply chain, which is important for understanding what we're seeing in today's market. So I want to thank the folks at Lucid for inviting me down for this uh, initial uh, sneak peek at the Lucid Air and the Lucid Studio here here at the Yorkdale Mall in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. They've already got one of these studios open in Vancouver, and my understanding is the next on the list later on, maybe this later this year, uh, will be a Montreal location as well. And that'll, that'll, that'll be probably it for 2022 from a Lucid rollout, but they could do more, uh, but that'll give them a good advantage. So if you're in the GTA or in Vancouver, I would encourage you to go check out their stores, or if you're in the U.S. where they have their locations as well, their studios, go check them out. Thank you very much, Lucid, for and again inviting me, and thank you very much for watching uh, on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, please do. That would be great. Always appreciate Patreon supporters. Uh, if you're interested, you can look at the link below and get more information on supporting me there. Everybody continue to stay safe and keep your eye on the EV market. There's a lot of stuff going on, and until the next episode, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.